Uh, my name is uh, Batir Din Gankoyak, and uh, my partner's name is Bayer. Bayer, Bayer. Um, and we we are the Wi-Fi guys in Mongolia. Um, the reason we we are a wireless internet service provider company, um, and we provide um, we call it the Gary District. It's the suburbs of of uh, Ulaanbaatar city um, that has um, that lacks the, the, the most basic uh, infrastructures such as um, clean running water, sewage system, uh, power, electricity, um, and, and things like this, and no roads there, um, no street lighting, and this is where almost 80% of our city lives. And, uh, and then it was, a, it was a major issue for us. So you know, also a very un, very untapped market for, for internet services. So we what we do is we use technology of Wi-Fi uh, to penetrate the the, um, the youths, the carriage they live in, because the infrastructure is so thin. Wi-Fi signal is to able to you know um, be delivered to these families. Um, so uh, we are. Well, probably one of just two companies were doing this and we started it all in the country and uh, uh, we have very positive back, uh, feedback from the customers and it's um, growing uh, every day um, and uh, but with this uh, comes a uh, big challenges also um, challenges such as um, competing companies and big mobile operator companies and uh, telecommunication companies so um, this is this is basically what we do. But the way we did it is, I think it's 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 one of the first in the world, if not I mean in the Mongolia, if not world. But um, when I when I came back, um, I was lucky enough and privileged enough that my parents were able to send me to um, get a receive education in the, in the in the U.S. So I went as an exchange student to Portland, Oregon, um, and graduated from a high school there and. Uh, then on, um, I was able to go to University of Utah and then school in the UK and came back after almost seven, eight years in my home, co my home country. So the uh, same as with Bayer, he, he went to South Korea, Seoul, and studied there for eight years. So um, when, when we lived, left and we were just, uh, we were just uh, turned democratic country. We've been 75, six years of communist country and we were born there and we were raised up there and our thinking, way of thinking and mentality was completely different. So um, it was very surprising when I got, went, went to, to, to the States first time and, and uh, I, was, I was amazed uh, with a lot of things, but uh, I was amazed with one, one thing the most, which was uh, being able to connect on the internet. Uh, my parents scrapped together all their money to just to send me, send me to the States and I was supposed to uh, be on my own then on. So um, after I learned sufficient enough, I mean English, English language, then I started using internet and I was fascinated about it. And, and with the internet, I was able to find school, I was able to find friends and work. Uh, and without it, I would have completely fail because I didn't know anybody there. Um, you know, so um, I would have came back empty-handed to, to my country after the exchange student program was over. But when I came back, um, I came with the offer letter from the university, uh, which was which was um, very exciting to me and to my to my family. So I went back and I studied there. And I went, uh, so this is this is this is uh, how my uh, idea started. After I finished the university, I came back to Mongolia. And, and, and I mean, a lot of the people I spoke to you know, after I came back, um, we didn't really see eye to eye. Um, and I wondered why, but, uh, but then I figured out that we, we do have um, very different of, of, of information. Um, and, and, and this was a, and again, it was a, it was a good business. And I tried to, um, to do an ISP business and to, to supply internet to the people within the city, within the apartments and then and the already developed city. But uh, there was, I think, 30 to 40 companies at the moment packed in within the city. But there were this, within the downtown of the area, it's only 15 to 20% of the people live. And the rest of the people are living in the gay districts, in the suburbs. But they were, I mean, looked after. 
So I decided to, to, to do an ISP business in the Indigo districts, in the poorer area of the city. Um, but there was no infrastructure, which was the biggest challenge for us. And there was a reason why companies did not uh, already approach this, these areas. Um, then we came to thinking that, hey, why not Wi-Fi? Uh, we have a huge country and we, we have uh, very few people. If we are able, if we are to cover this all this um, land with the fiber of the cable, and it'd be just, you know, it would be crazy. We need lots of amounts of cable, and nobody be able to afford these services. So um, my short, our shortcut was that we went to the families, the, to the communities, and talked to the people and asked that if they are willing to help and be participating part of the of the Wi-Fi project. Um, then they, nobody refused. Actually, that was the. the huge surprise um, nobody refused to help us so so everybody helped us i talked to a, for example i talked to one family um, and and offered them uh, free wi-fi uh, for a lifetime in return i asked if our pole for the mounting antennas be located within their premises in the fence area and the family provides electricity to it and looks after it so basically uh, I didn't have to acquire any land permits from the city or the country and I don't have to pay annual or monthly taxes to this having this infrastructure and the family gets a free Wi-Fi and in return we have a one access point that's serving maybe around 100 to 150 families the neighbors around this particular family so we did that now about almost 500 families um, that's penetrating about uh, almost 40 percent of the the girl districts um, and we're in the middle of it and we when we started this project nobody believed us and therefore um, we begged money from our parents uh, we still do to pay 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 back to them um, but compared to investing in infrastructure like 3g and LTE or um, more modern and corporate infrastructures this just installing out the access point is much simpler and it's much more cost effective and it works and uh, this, this is the great thing and, and digital divide is just as important as a um, lot of the problems you know a um, lot of the other problems too so um, giving information to the people uh, in Mongolia we complain about bad government bad you know parliament bad presidency but without giving them enough information uh, so they can make up their own mind um, it's just hopeless to, to have good leadership and good um, governance in the country. So, so uh, okay. In, in the U.S., what you're doing is illegal. Because I, I've tried. They, <laughs> honestly, I've tried. Um, uh, even um, in the city of Detroit, mm -hmm. the mayor, uh, because, you know, you have the polls outside where they did the... Um, they watched what was going on. They realized they were only using 10% of the of the internet inside the polls. And the mayor of Detroit decided to open it up and put 90%, that 90% back as Wi-Fi to the rest of the entire city. MCI came against them with a horrible lawsuit. I mean, horrible, horrible lawsuit. How do you protect and insulate yourself against the telecom shutting you down from your main access point? Well, this is this is one of our uh, biggest challenges now. Um, but uh, by keeping small and, and the running costs low, because we the, the our investment is it's just a fracture of what they will invest. Um, and and our method, uh, because we are a community project and a social entrepreneurship project, it is supported by the by the people and the users in itself. So so we have enormous support from from the people actually. So um, Wi-Fi is licensed in, in, in the city uh, and we have uh, acquired, I think we are one of the only two companies uh, to acquire um, Wi-Fi licenses in the city. Um, and and the law made it that operator companies actually could not uh, acquire Wi-Fi licenses. So they'd be able to just work on the 3G or LTE licenses, but they can't acquire um, Wi-Fi licenses. So, um, but we are still at the crossroads, policymakers and private sector and even the users. We were all a bit confused. 
But we know what certain thing is, is, is telecommunication company is, is protects only those who own it and it services only those who own it. But, but free Wi-Fi and, and I have wide available Wi-Fi, it's just that the, the tipping scale is now with the, I mean, the people, we have more people who want Wi-Fi than uh, you know, people who want to keep the internet locked up and tight and make a profit of it. So um, I know that um, uh, Facebook even starting an internet.org um, initiative um, and, and a lot of people are starting to address digital device problems. Um, even, you know, some Scandinavian countries are making it into the constitution to have that people must have broadband access, every apartment should have. So, so I, think the, the, I think the world is a crossroads. Is it, is it only few companies who should make money on the internet? Or, you know, but uh, there's so many other things like contacts you can make money on. So why not focus there and then just give, give a little back to the people? So, um, uh, and then and th thanks to democracy and uh, people who uh, votes has the power. So um, the big uh, corporations and then the policy makers, uh, they tend to listen to the people. And, uh, and if we pro I mean, provide these people with the, uh, this basic infrastructure, I, th I, th I think the big corporations can lead with a uh, little bit of loss or a little bit of less profit uh, on their hands. Gotcha.